She's alive! Alive! She was created as a mate of the Frankenstein monster. She is the monster's bride. I am the Markman and today we are going to unbox and review Jada's Universal Monster Toys, The Bride of Frankenstein. So, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Then welcome to the Markverse! She's alive! Alive! This is one of the most memorable dialogue of the 1935 movie from Universal Pictures, which this figure is based from, The Bride of Frankenstein. This is my first Jada toy, and its scale is smaller compared to the figures of NECA. Let's check the design. Her face looks similar to Elsa Lanchester, which is good. She's the actress that played the role. Her eyes, nose, and lips. Her facial feature is clean. No issue on its color and no smudges. But Jada missed one thing in regard to her face. It is the stitches on her jaw for both sides. In the film, before she was resurrected, she already has stitches. I do not know how they missed this. Then for her hair, I guess the details are correct. When she was resurrected, her face and body was totally bandaged. Then the only, um, then only the bandage on her face was removed. This is why the bandages on her body remain. Then when, when she was able to stand, she wore this white clothes. This clothes actually can be removed. As you can see on her back and front, we can also see bandages. Okay, so good details. Okay, um, so that we can clearly see her articulation, let's just remove the upper part of her clothes. I'm not going to totally remove her clothes because later we might have a hard time putting it back. So for the head, up, down, then sides, then for the arms, okay, so we can move it sideways. Then backward, okay, so we have full motion. Then for her, let's check if she has biceps. Okay, so she has biceps swivel. Then we can also, 
I guess we, okay, so um, we can also move her elbow, but it is only single jointed. Then full motion for her hand. Then let's put her clothes down for a moment to check her torso. Okay, so we have movement for her upper torso. So there is articulation. So let's put this back. Then for her lower torso, we don't have any waist articulation, so no art waist articulation. Then for her legs, we can move it sideways, then forward, but we cannot move it back. So it's already hitting this part. Then we have double jointed knee so you can see we have two joints here let's check the thigh swivel okay so we have thigh swivel and we also have full ankle articulation but no toe movement Now for her accessories, we have two alternate hands. The first is a rock star hand sign or the sign of the horns, which honestly I do not know why they made it this way. Then the second, this is much better. There is even a hole. So she can hold something that's, that fits this part. Then there is also an excess bandage. Then the next accessories, these are poles. This is my concern. You need two more of this. This were used on each corners of the table where she was lying when they elevated her to be hit by the lightning. So, there should be four poles, but Jada only included two. So, I wish they had added two more. But that gives me an idea. I think I could fabricate a steel table for her and two more poles. So, let's check the details of this pole. So, it has a base. It has different base. So these two have the same chain, having same fabric, but the base are different. So the other end of this chain is connected to another pole. And this is the reason why I said that there should be four poles. Then I think the, the reason why they included fabrics here is when they elevated the table, 
Dr. Frankenstein could see how strong the wind is. A anyway, that is only my guess, but I'm not sure about it. And this change looks realistic. Lastly, the substitute head. If we look closely, we can see her teeth and tongue. Still, there's no stitches below her jaw. But I like the scalp of her face. Eyes, eyebrow, nose, and mouth, and basically her hair. Actually, hair, her hair is the same. So let's change its head. So I'm not sure if this is already stable, but I think it is. Okay, just checking. And let's also change her hands. Let's start with the right one. And then the left. So she's like a rock star. I'm going to retain her head and her right hand, but I'm going to change her left hand. So the this head is better for display. Now let's measure her. She is around five and a half inches and six inches if it includes the highest part of her hair. Then for comparison, maybe the closest figure that I have that I can use is McFarlane's Night King from the Game of Thrones. Because the figures of NECA is actually quite bigger for comparison. So this is Elvira. So as you can see how big Elvira is. Okay, so let's just put Elvira at the back. And we can also call McFarland's Death Storm. For the comparison. Okay, so that is the measurement and comparison. This is a simple figure. It is also clean. There's no paint issues. It looks close to the film except for the stitches below her jaw, which is missing in the figure. For the accessories, I should have been very happy if they have at least included four poles instead of two. For her hands, I don't see the Rockstar hand sign access accessory necessary. I guess they should have made it at least a claw hand for better display purpose. For her alternate head, I like the screaming face better. It adds more fearful aura in my display together with the other figures. 
Then for her articulation, I don't have any problems with it. So if you enjoyed the video, click the thumbs up button. Please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to push that notification button since I publish new videos every week. Again, I am The Markman. Thank you for visiting The Markverse. And always remember to pay it forward with kindness.